Hello, Jay, everybody. Um, welcome to the CMFSA uh, annual conference. My name is Stuart, and I'm going to be emceeing the proceedings today. Um, we'll be broadcasting live on the Facebook page, and a recording of the event will be on YouTube on Monday. Um, the order of proceedings is as follows. I'm going to hand over to Ryan, our CEO, who's going to be spend five minutes, spending five minutes welcoming us, after which he'll play a song for us to sing along with. I'm going to ask that while we sing along, that we keep our mics muted um, to avoid syncing problems with the sound. Um, after that, um, Pastor Dr. Takuma is going to share some of God's word with us for half an hour, and we'll have a 15-minute tea break. At 3 o'clock, we'll have um, the first plenary talk with Colin Pratt on um, challenges in an uncertain world. Then we'll split into small groups for an hour, um, and Zoom will split us all into um, a small group for, for discussion. And after that, we'll have the closing remarks. And I'd like to um, say a reminder about the CMFSA AGM, which will be for about 20 to 30 minutes at five o'clock after the conference ends today. So let me open in prayer, and then I'll hand over to Ryan. Dear Lord and Father God, we thank you so much for being here on this conference. Thank you for everyone who's attending. Thank you, Lord, for our speakers. And we pray, Father God, that you would have your hand blessing the proceedings today, um, that many would be enriched by hearing your word and hearing um, the testimony of your people. Um, and we pray that your name would be glorified in everything that is done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Brian, over to you. Amen. Thank you, Stuart. Well, it's uh, such a privilege to be among great company. In fact, uh, <laughs> with COVID, we've had to change our, the order of the program and the order of activities, I'm sure, in all our workplaces. But uh, I'm so glad that God made it possible for us to gather because one of the highlights of uh, CMF is our conferences. And we miss the actual live gathering and uh, being among the students. But thank God that we're able to gather in this way. And we're looking forward to a powerful two-day conference together with our AGM later on. And you know the theme of the conference is hope in a hopeless world. And uh, we're living in strategic times, uh, both as, firstly as Christians in this dispensation, we're living in strategic times, but also as uh, people on the forefront of healthcare. And we are different to the world. So we pray that, you know, we're looking forward to a powerful word of God from Pastor Lamuka as well as my good friend Colin Pfaff and uh, Farai Charasika tomorrow. But we're really looking forward to an awesome time. So I wonder if we could just uh, sing a praise unto God in this time. Unfortunately, we can't all sing together. Uh, we have to, you'll have to mute your mics, but you can sing at home and just give God worship uh, right now as we sing. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that makes this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. The King of all days, the King of all days, Oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sake became poor. Mm -hmm. So here I am to worship. 
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. Here I am, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. This is our hope. You know what? I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that. Just meditate on that and say, I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So my only response to you, Father, is here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, hallelujah. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. We bless your name, O oh Lord. We worship you, O oh God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of all honor. You're the hope. You're our joy. You're our peace. You're everything to us. Can you worship him wherever you are right now for a few moments? You're the hope in a hopeless world, God. There is no hope without you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. Take our lives, take our hearts, take everything, God. Father, won't you bless our time with you, Jesus? We may not be in the same vicinity, God, but I pray that your Holy Spirit will move among us, that your word will fall on good ground. I know that there are many, oh God, that are tired right now. There are many that are, oh Father, weak and weary, especially in this time, in this pandemic. But God, I pray that you will give us strength. I pray that your word of God will come and bring healing to our hearts. Your word will come and bring hope where we feel hopeless. Your word of God will strengthen us. I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say you're my God. Hallelujah. Back to you, Stuart. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Um, before we move on, I'd like to ask everybody to, uh, those who are willing, to turn their cameras on so I can take a screenshot of everyone who's joining us today um, for a group photograph of sorts. Lovely to see you all.
Okay. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to smile. I'll give a five second countdown and take a screenshot. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, fantastic. Um, great. And now I'd like to hand over to um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dlamuka, who's going to be sharing God's word with us. Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, thanks, uh, Stuart. Uh, much appreciated. Just wanted to uh, appreciate uh, the organizing committee for uh, putting up such an event. Uh, I, I'm sure it's not easy, uh, but uh, they've done a sterling job. We appreciate, uh, yeah, we appreciate your leadership and uh, we send our greetings to everyone uh, who is joining us online, wherever you are. Um, I understand that uh, we do have uh, people far and wide uh, who are joining us uh, on, on this Zoom conference. Uh, uh, it's good to have you. Uh, um, many of us have been lonely because uh, of restrictions and uh, uh, it's always nice to have some form of fellowship with everyone. Um, hope in a hopeless world, uh, what a powerful uh, theme that we have chosen, uh, very uh, pertinent and uh, very relevant for such a time as this. Um, maybe just to start off uh, in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19, the Bible speaks of the hope that we have which is an anchor for our souls. Uh, so in other words, if we have hope, uh, biblical hope that is, uh, uh, we, are, we are stable, we are firm, we are secure in a very insecure world, in a very unstable world. Because of the hope that we have, uh, which is Christ Jesus, we are secure and we are established on a firm foundation. And that is what we want to just touch on uh, in the next uh, uh, 25 minutes or so. Um, just to probably um, um, uh, clarify a few things uh, as, as we move on. Um, I know that we have uh, Bible students uh, amongst us here. Uh, there's always a question of what is the difference between faith and hope? Um, it would be nice to probably just touch on that briefly. Um, the, the Greek word for hope is alpis, uh, which simply means to have eager expectation uh, for something great to happen. Um, it, it also means great anticipation. Uh, on the other hand, faith, uh, the Greek word for faith is pistis, which is uh, referring to the conviction or the deep conviction or firm persuasion that we have based on what we have heard or what we have, uh, 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 what has been revealed to us. Um, so the word hope and faith uh, uh, in Christendom are often used interchangeably. Uh, uh, but strictly speaking, faith is our conviction based on what we have heard, based on God's word. And hope is our anticipation. Uh, based on what we've heard, we anticipate. So we don't just have passive convictions. Hope gives us active uh, 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 persuasion and conviction. We, we are actually on the urge of our seat, really trusting God that whatever we are convicted of shall come to pass. And that, that, is, that is the hope. And that is why when you tie faith and hope together, you end up in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith, therefore, is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Uh, and again, in other words, when we have a conviction about something, uh, uh, we eagerly await for that to come to pass. And, and right now, you know, uh, uh, speaking into the uh, situation that we're all facing uh, globally, in spite of what the statistics are saying, you know, the mortality rate, uh, uh, we're bombarded with statistics on daily basis uh, on the news, and, but we still maintain, this is the conviction that we hope, uh, uh, that, that we hold in our hearts. Jesus Christ is Jehovah Rapha, by his stripes, we were healed. And that is what we're trusting God for, even as, as, as health professionals. It's very important that we hold that conviction dearly in our hearts 
that by his stripes we were healed. He has sent forth his word to heal our diseases. And, and when we hold that conviction, we therefore eagerly anticipate for the curve to flatten. Uh, and, and that is where the hope is, the anticipation that the pandemic will not have the final say on humanity. And, and, and we, we must have that eager expectation. So it's a pity that when you actually follow the mainstream media, especially, they, they are always painting the worst case scenario. Um, there's a, a talk of a second wave in which millions and millions are going to die. But we are saying, this is our conviction, by his stripes we were healed based on John 10.10, 10, he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We hold on to that dearly in the midst of very negative statistics and, 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 and that's the hope that we have. So our hope is eager anticipation for God to do something in this situation. And, and our hope is different from how we often use that word hope on day-to-day -day basis, you know, the, that word is often used flippantly, uh, uh, the word hope, uh, I hope I make it in my exams. I hope uh, uh, it doesn't rain tomorrow. And, and, and that is not the hope uh, we're talking about. So biblical hope is very much based on our conviction. It is based on what we're hearing God saying in this season. It is based on the revelation that we have uh, concerning what God is doing. Um, uh, so uh, I love uh, Jesus um, in John chapter 5, verse 17. John chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus is questioned for doing things, um, and especially on the Sabbath. You know, he's, he's healing people, and uh, he's healing people when he's not expected to, 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 to heal people. Um, and, and then this is what he says. My father is always at work. God, the Father, is always at work. And that's one of the reasons why we should have hope. In the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of this pandemic, God is still at work. Obviously, the news will always report on what the devil is doing. The, the news will always report on the killing, the stealing, and the destruction. Uh, but we need to have men and women, just like you and I, um, who are filled with the spirit of the living God, who are going to say in the midst of the killing, the destruction and the stealing, but Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So there's, 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 there's that which is happening on the earth. God is at work. It is not just Corona uh, that is at work, but God is at work. And what is he doing? He is healing. He is delivering. He is setting people free. And we should always hold that dearly. Jesus says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captives free, to declare the year of God's favor. And that anointing has not stopped working even in such a pandemic. So that's the hope that we have. Um, in Isaiah 59 uh, verse 19, the Bible says, when the enemy comes, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise the standard. And, and one of the questions that we should be asking ourselves, while we see the mortality rate and you know, the economy is collapsing because of COVID-19, while we see even um, 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 instability in most governments, businesses collapsing, while we see that, um, um, what is God doing? In other words, if the enemy comes in and God lifts up the standard, how does that look like? How, how is God lifting the standard in this current situation? So that's the mindset that will give us hope. And, and, and I want us just to reflect on that. That's the question I will pose maybe for small groups later on. What do you see God doing in the midst of all the negativity? Because if God is always at work, it means God is doing something even in this current situation. Unfortunately, we are always drawn to the negative things that are happening. Um, uh, we, we, there's, there's usually even on the news, there are no good stories that people are reporting on. And they report more on those that are dying than those that are recovering. You know, you, when you're watching the news, it's quite interesting. The stories of recoveries 
will always be a small print, you know, uh, at the bottom of your screen. But the stories of people that are sick, people that are in the ICU, people that are on ventilators, people that are dying, that will be the main story. But I still maintain that if we are to have hope, we need to check what God is doing. We need to look at what God is doing. So I want you to be encouraged. God is at work. And uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, God works in all things, including this pandemic. God works in all things together for those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. There's another question that we can pose. What is God working together for our good? I know it's a painful situation. People have lost businesses. People have lost employment. People have lost their loved ones. But what is God working for our good uh, in this situation? Maybe there's another question that we, we could be asking. The reason why it's important to understand that because that's where our hope is. Our hope is in what God is doing. I hope you understand by now that when we talk about hope, especially, um, uh, uh, with regards to the current pandemic, we're not just looking at uh, the vaccines that are coming, uh, because uh, even the, the efficacy of those vaccines is not guaranteed that they are going to be the silver bullet uh, to this pandemic. So our hope is more than the vaccination program, but our hope is in God and what he is doing. Um, I want us, therefore, to just uh, uh, mile on that. Uh, and uh, another issue that is so important in this season, uh, as we reflect on hope, is every practitioner, every clinician, uh, everyone serving in the medical uh, field, and uh, uh, if you're in the healthcare sector, I understand with medical students with us here, um, one of the qualities that uh, those of us that are practicing will have to have, actually every believer must have that quality. You must have the ability to encourage yourself during such times and, 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 and self-encouragement is going to be key uh, because I, I, I'm convinced that you cannot give hope to your patients, to your colleagues. You cannot give hope to this hopeless world if you don't have hope. So one of the things that uh, I want us just to reflect on, for you to give hope, you must have hope in your heart and there would be a, a need therefore to learn to encourage yourself uh, uh, there, there's, uh, there are statistics that are very shocking um, uh, especially for us as south africans and uh, apparently the suicide rate in south africa is four times higher than the global rate to themselves um, uh, 13 south africans in South Africans will kill, uh, sorry, for, for every 100,000 people, 13 South Africans will commit suicide. The global rate is 3.6 per 100,000 people. And another shocking statistic as well, uh, one doctor per day in the U.S. commits suicide. One doctor per day in the U.S. And so the, the, there is a great need uh, since we are in a profession that is a high risk for suicide, there is a great need for us to learn to encourage ourselves. And, and the, 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 the classical example of self-encouragement would be David. Some of you might remember the story when David was uh, actually surrounded by the men that he had mentored, the men that he had worked with just because of a misunderstanding, just a moment of misunderstanding, all of a sudden these men are now speaking of stoning David to death. And then I love what the word of God says in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, the Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. And, and every one of us will have to learn that. You cannot give hope to your patients if you yourself are not encouraged. As they say, you cannot put on the counter what you don't have in your shelf. So you have to have the abundance of hope in your heart for you to give hope to others. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, sorry, I'll have to move fast because of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, Paul says, we comfort others who are in trouble because of the comfort that we ourselves have received. Uh, so you cannot, again, 
give comfort when you don't have comfort. So the idea of self-encouragement is very important. Uh, you might also remember the story of uh, Elijah when he was hunted down by Jezebel. Um, and, and, and there was a point when he wished he could just die. And, uh, and, and, and again, there are times when we are so much under pressure. Some of us have lost colleagues in this pandemic. We've seen our loved ones pass on in this pandemic. And uh, you, you, you think through that and you, you feel very discouraged uh, at times. But again, when Elijah felt that uh, there was nothing more for him on this planet, I love God, he comes through. And then for 40 days, Elijah, one of the things that Elijah had to go through for 40 days of isolation was to encourage himself. He, he had to learn to encourage himself. And, and I'll encourage that. And so one of the questions that I'll pose to you, uh, maybe again in our small groups is, let us discuss on how can we encourage ourselves? There will be moments when your pastor will not give you a phone call when you need it most. There'll be moments when colleagues will not give you uh, that WhatsApp message, you know, when there is no, um, uh, no one texting you words of encouragement. Will you crumble? Will you bail out? And the answer is you should not. You should not because we should learn to encourage ourselves even if there is no one around us. So that is very important, uh, the issue of self-encouragement. And um, the second thing that I want to say about hope is that hope must be based on the truth. We cannot base our hope on wishful thinking, you know, and, and, and that, that's, the, that's the major difference when we talk about biblical hope. Biblical hope is based on truth. And, and, and that is why in the, the, the idea of truth is a very powerful uh, idea. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 32, the Bible says, you will know the truth and the knowledge of the truth will set you free. And, and on the opposite is also true. Lies and deception are very oppressive. And uh, there's a lot of lies that is going on, uh, uh, even around the issue of this pandemic, you know, uh, they, there's a lot of deception that is going on. And that is why we need God. We need God in addition to our science. We need God to reveal the truth to us so that even when we encourage one another, when we give hope to one another, it is based on God's truth. It is not, again, our, our hope should not be based on the vaccination program. We bless God if, the, if a vaccine is found, um, if, if, if there are solutions, practical, medical, therapeutic solutions that are found, we bless God for that. But the reality is those can also fail. But there's one thing guaranteed, God will never fail. And that is where our hope should be. Uh, so the idea of truth is, is, is very important. There's a, a, an example that I love in scripture uh, regarding truth and hope. It's found in the, in the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 17 to 20. Uh, it's, a, it's a story of Elisha and his servant. They were surrounded by the Aramean army. That army, it was uh, thousands of men, uh, soldiers that were coming to capture Elisha, the prophet of God. And uh, so when his, servants, when his servant woke up in the morning, he sees uh, these thousands and thousands of people looking for Elisha. And then um, he goes back to tell Elisha that there are people that are coming for us. Surprisingly, Elisha was relaxed. And Elisha was not worried. He was not panicking. And, and, and again, it's quite interesting. In this season, many of us were panicking. Many of us were very anxious. Some of us even abandoned our faith during this season because of what COVID-19 was doing. And, 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 but here's the thing that uh, I want to bring to your attention. This is where hope comes in. Elisha prays and he makes this prayer. He says, Lord, open his eyes open his eyes so that he can see that those that are with us are more than the enemies that surround us. Now, you have two realities there. And I want us to, again, we're, we're looking at hope and truth. Elisha's servant was just looking at a physical reality. 
But Elisha, the prophet, was looking not just at the physical reality of the enemies that uh, outnumbered them, but he went into a spiritual reality. And in that spiritual reality, he saw angels, myriads of angels that were surrounding them. And the myriads of angels that surrounded them outnumbered the army of the Arameans. And that is what I know, this is not an easy one, but I want to invite you so that we go into that realm where we see what God is doing. And based on what God is doing, and I do believe, this is what I believe, when you go into that place where God is at work, you will understand that what God is doing is more powerful than COVID-19. You see, you have to see it. You have to be convinced that the healing power of the living God, God's powerful, powerful anointing that is able to break the yoke, that is more powerful than the power of COVID-19. So that when we give hope, we base our hope on what God can do, what God has promised in his word, and we need revelation for that. So it, 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 it is quite interesting. So there are two dimensions. Whenever there is a crisis, there's, there's always going to be two dimensions. The, the, the dimension of the reality of the crisis, physical facts. And then there's a reality of the spiritual dimension, which is, again, the dimension where you will see the armies of the Lord working. So I, I pray, I, I, I'm convinced that the God we serve is able to redeem us from COVID-19. Uh, the God we serve is able to bring healing. And, 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 and we're trusting God that we are going to flatten this curve as, as, as we go on. And, but you and I, as medical practitioners, as clinicians and uh, in the healthcare sector, we have to have that because many of us were practicing medicine in a very you know, uncertain uh, a, a space. We, we didn't know what we were supposed to do, especially in the early months of the pandemic. We didn't know what we were going to use. There were many stories uh, about Zithromax, about uh, a, a chloroquine, and, and all of a sudden some medication is off the shelf. And you, you are caught up in a situation where you don't know exactly what to do. And, and you hear uh, of, of things that are working elsewhere, but they are not available to you. And, and that is why I do believe that even when there's shortage of resources, there is God who is at work. And, 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 and I do believe that we need to tap into that realm uh, so, so that our hope is based on the spiritual reality. Uh, so I, I believe strongly that when we give hope, it must be based on the truth of what God is doing. We must not be uh, uh, patronizing uh, uh, people. We, we should not give false hope but it must be based on the truth. There's another example that I want to give to you. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, uh, 28 uh, verse 3, there, is a, there are two prophets there. Israel has just been taken into captivity in Babylon. Two prophets are on the scene. One is Hananiah and uh, another is Jeremiah. Hananiah is saying, the nation of Israel, is not going to be in captivity for a long time. And that's the hope he's giving. He's saying the nation of Israel will only come back within a period of two years. They will be back from captivity. That's what he was saying. And then um, the, <laughs> he's trying to motivate. He's trying to give hope in a hopeless situation. And then there's another prophet, Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, Hananiah, I hear what you're saying. I wish that was true. That is what I am hoping for as well. But the prophets that have gone before us are not saying what you're saying. Um, according to them, Israel will spend 70 years in captivity. And then it's only after 70 years that God will bring back the nation of Israel uh, uh, to, 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 to the land of Israel. And then uh, God sets the record straight in the very same chapter. And this is the scripture that many of us know. Jeremiah 28, verse 11, and this is the scripture that is very popular. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you a good future and hope. But many of us miss verse 10. Verse 10 says, you will spend 70 years in captivity. 
And then after 70 years of captivity, then my promise will be fulfilled to give you a good future and a good hope. And, and, and so I, I like the idea of speaking the truth about what is happening. For example, some of the uncompatible discussions we could be having is, is there a need to repent for us as nations? And I know that again, we, we have a situation where some of us no longer even believe in repentance, you know. Should we be repenting in this season? So that again, you don't just give hope by passing the need for us to come humbly before God and say, Father, we have sinned before you. We, we have done things that are defiant against your word. So that before you can even bring deliverance and healing into this situation, Father, we just want to come before you in our nakedness and, and, and we want to come before you bringing our hearts and saying, we are sorry for digressing from your word. We are sorry for our rebellion against your word. So that's the truth. And then out of the truth comes hope. Because I do believe the Bible tells us that it's very clear. When we repent, times of refreshing will come. That's, that's what Peter is saying. Repent, therefore, so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Any hope that is given without the truth, most likely that will be false hope. So I, I want us just to reflect on that. So one of the things that we could be, again, uh, uh, looking into is what is it that we should be looking into as part of the truth? so that we can enjoy the fullness of hope, so that our hope is not factitious, so that our hope is truthful. Hallelujah. So that, 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 is, that, is, that is key. Um, I want to close with this. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 26 to 28, the Bible says there is going to be a shaking that will take place and, and, and heavens will be shaken. The earth will be shaken. One of the things that we probably can agree on is that there was a lot of shaking. There has been a lot of shaking associated with COVID-19. Almost every structure was shaken by COVID-19. Um, and, 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 and we've seen things that we never thought we will see in our lifetime. Um, and... and uh, but there is a promise, and I love this in verse 28, Hebrews chapter 12. It says, but let us be thankful that in the midst of the shaking, we believers are inheriting a kingdom that will never be shaken. And, and for me, that is also powerful. So that is where our hope derives from. We can see economies collapsing. We can see governments collapsing. We can see many institutions um, and being hit hard by what is happening uh, in the world today. But this is our hope. We are giving honor and praise to God that our kingdom, the kingdom that has come through our Lord Jesus Christ, will never be shaken. It remains immovable even in the midst of COVID-19. Even if our vaccination programs don't do well against this pandemic, we still have hope. Because within God's kingdom, there is still healing within God's kingdom, even if modern medicine and science fails. In God's kingdom, there is still supernatural power. And that is why my prayer for us as medical professionals is that no matter how much training you've received, no matter how much science you carry in your brain, don't forget, don't forget that the anointing is still the most powerful force that breaks the yoke. And, and you can never do without the anointing because there is no therapy that is 100% a, 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 a safe proof and, and including the vaccination that uh, we are looking at. So I want to just encourage you. Our kingdom knows no failure. Our kingdom is not subject to COVID-19. Uh, there is power in the kingdom that we are part of. And based on that, we can give hope. And, and that is why in this season, one of the most powerful things that uh, we should be uh, uh, reflecting on is to present Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I do believe that people's hearts are open because people are looking for answers. People are looking for solutions. And we have seen politicians cannot offer us those solutions. Uh, we're seeing corruption. We're seeing injustice even during the season. So if there is any hope, that hope lies with believers like you and I uh, who are going to present Jesus Christ 
the hope of glory in a hopeless world. God bless you. Uh, 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 to, tomorrow, we will continue on this subject of giving hope, and we're going to be looking mainly at how we can give hope in, 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 in an unjust system. Uh, how can we serve in a manner that will bring honor and glory and the, in a manner that will bring hope again in a broken system? Our medical system, our health healthcare system is broken in so many ways, but we can still give hope. So that is what we are going to be looking at uh, 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 tomorrow. And um, I want us also to, to also bear in mind there is another powerful piece as we talk about hope. How do we give hope in the context of end time prophecy? Because we are in the last days. Um, and and uh, I know that we have different, different beliefs uh, as to how it's all going to pan out. But there is no doubt that there is a consensus within the body of Christ that we are in the last days. Now, if we are in the last days, how do we give hope? Um, uh, uh, so that the church of our Lord Jesus Christ is victorious as we conclude church history. Um, uh, so we, we, I pray that you be strong in the Lord. May you be full of hope. God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrew, uh, in, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 25, this is what it says. When the storm has swept over, the rushes will remain standing, but the wicked will be devastated. And, and I pray that you be counted among those that will remain standing. May God richly bless you. Uh, I, I'll hand over to Stuart. Thank you, Dr. Baruka. Um, Dr. Sibunus Kimoko is a medical doctor working for a PEPFAR funded NGO that supports the Etiquinian District in HIV and TB management. He's also a senior pastor of the Christ Centered Missions Church in Queensburg, Durban. He also does medical missions in rural Malawi with groups of friends, and he is married to Mbali, and they are blessed with four kids. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing God's word with us. Um, we're going to have a 15 minute break now. Uh, we're going to share two short videos. And after 15 minute break, we'll welcome Colin Pfaff for his plenary talk on hope in an uncertain world. <laughs> 